The new Greece civilization is in game. And although you might be tempted to open up your gold keys right now to get the new legendary commander, stop! Don't do it! He's not in the gold keys yet. Stick around in this video for all of the important things you need to know about the new Greece update that just landed in game. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And when I woke up this morning, I was so excited to see that the Grease updated landed, because that meant that we could start to pull for the new legendary commander, who by the way, I looked up the pronunciation of his name, and it's like, a little bit embarrassing, but it is Pyrrhus, like P. Russ, or, <laughs> P. Russ, or if you prefer, Pier Us. But it's Pyrrhus. That's his name, man. And he's got yellow armor, so we're just going to roll with it. And it feels silly to pronounce. But he is actually a very, very famous historical figure. Although, weirdly, even though we now have Greece in game, it is officially here. Okay? He is not yet in the gold keys. And we have seen this in the past. That he will not appear in the gold keys until... Uh, the sort of event for him shows up in game. So if you haven't already opened your gold keys, don't do it because he's not in there. And if you want to confirm this for yourself without opening any gold keys, you look in the golden chest rewards, you scroll on down, okay? And he ain't there. No Pyrrhus in this list, not anywhere. Now, if you keep looking, however, we don't even see the new epic commander. Is that right? Really? Even the Epic Commander not obtainable yet? Let me tell you, if I were betting, I would not bet my gold keys that you will get either of them from this chest yet. Now, if you have alternate evidence, you can let me know in the comments, although probably people who make those comments are posting sometime in the future after they are in fact released to the Golden Keys. So when is that probably going to happen? Well, they announced in the patch notes that there is going to be a special event related to the launch of this new commander, and it's not here yet. So it could be here as early as tomorrow, and even in other kingdoms, I haven't yet seen it. So hopefully sometime soon, we can gain access to the new commander, Pyrrhus. And I haven't made a commander guide about him yet. For those of you wondering, yo, is he gonna be good? That's really not knowable until we have the museum buffs and the information about that. So, of course, one of the other places I looked this morning when I wanted to see, hey, is Pyrrhus going to be relevant, is we make our way to the museum. Now, because he is a gold key commander, you would expect that he not only has a single relic, but a double relic. And if you're new to the game and you're looking at this museum, you're like, what the hell is that? Well, when you get to kingdom versus kingdom and you're in your third season, I believe that is the time when you first now gain access to the museum, which buffs the original commanders of the game to make them even relevant, mostly, um, in the end game, okay? Uh, because the power level between the new commanders and the old commanders is so different. They've got to put like 60% of stats on the, you know, earliest commanders you gain access to, uh, to make them even relevant compared to the end game meta stuff, okay? So he's not in here yet, and I'll be making a guide about him for sure in the future, once we have that important, critical information about how he even works, okay? So consider subscribing if you haven't already. And we're not yet done with this video, so you're not going to want to miss that Pyrrhus guide whenever it becomes relevant, because, hey, you know, the shielding thing that, that he's got in his kit is kind of relevant, and I'm, I'm interested to see if it's good, right? So from here, there are other things we do need to talk about from this update that are very important. One of those that is, you know, relevant to pretty much everybody is that you can now go in to the courier station and you go to the shop for armaments and you can get 15 transmutation stones and they are 30 silver currency each. Now I went in and sold a bunch of my excess stuff and as a whale, I've got a lot of this extra currency and I could make more of it if I wanted to, but on my account where I'm not spending like crazy, I do not have a ton of this silver currency. So you now have a choice to make between do I get these transmutation stones and do I get more epic and blue crates? And I would say that the transmutation stones are almost certainly the priority. I actually think they're not really overpriced um, because you need so many of them to actually lock multiple attributes. 
but now seems like a fine time to just show you how that works and to try a few transmutation rerolls on armaments. Now, there was a couple other things that we do need to talk about that showed up in my bundles. Those are lost bundles. Those are bundles that for whatever reason didn't show up for you and they were supposed to be pop-up bundles. And I had eight, uh, I guess two bundles that, that added up to eight of these legendary formation choice chests. So we're gonna open those up real quick. I'm just gonna do wedge formation, make this easy. Nothing for the epic. We'll rip open all of these right now. Please be good. And okay, an inscribed legendary. Let's go. Yo, now how are these? These ones without an inscription. Oh, oh bro. Low rolls on everything. You can literally get epic armaments better than that. GG. Smite. 2% uh, extra normal attack damage with some archer attack. Eh, it's not very exciting. Okay. So we opened up those armaments. But transmutation, you may recall, lets you lock um, one or more or, or even none of the attributes on an armament and you re-roll them. And you can use transmutation stones on any legendary armament that is inscribed. So for example, this legendary armament has enraged and onslaught so one and a half percent extra normal attack damage and two and a half percent extra skill damage it ain't bad it's not the meta for the end game because the legendary inscriptions you can get from kvk are insane and they're really good but a double inscription over here is yo that's crazy now you only get 10 transmutations per um armament which is very limiting but you can see with Siege Unit Attack, Troop Load, and Siege Unit Health, it would be easy to do better than this one, right? And if I triple stat on this, it's actually insane. Now, the crazy thing is that the cost of transmuting actually goes up. So if I do this with no attributes locked, it only costs me one stone. Hey, that, that's pretty cheap, considering that it's got such garbage stats on here. I mean, I guess, God, if I actually cared about Siege Unit, this thing would be almost goaded almost because it's got siege unit attack and siege unit health like it could be a tragedy to re-roll this if they make siege relevant but i mean i don't think they're gonna do that for this formation okay i i'm gonna be so mad if somehow down the road siege is somehow god tier but look i got plenty of good siege armaments i have like 35 percent of stats on my best siege set with no inscription so i'm gonna re-roll this one now again if you lock one you guarantee you get that one but uh it's going to cost you now two more stones, three total, to transmute just the two. If you lock two, it costs you five stones total. So you can only do a very limited number of these per week. And I'm very tempted to take some of these rerolls on the ones that are cheap to try. Because whether or not you get something good is, I mean, going to be a lot of randomness. So we're going to transmute this bad boy for one stone, which seems good. Yes, it cost me one. Let's do this thing. And I get nothing interesting. I get infantry attack of 2.2%. I mean, that's decent. The, at this point, I might lock that attribute. If I'm, I mean, it's kind of a low roll. Cavalry defense of 1.5 is kind of meh. And damage to barbarians. I'm obviously going to replace what I have because what I have is just absolutely dog doo-doo. Um, we confirm that it's going to be overwritten and boom. So now we only have nine transmutation attempts left on this bad boy. And uh, that ain't that many. Uh, you, you might think it's a lot, but given that the transmutations can end up pretty bad, that's not actually that many. So this is going to leave you with some interesting choices here. One example of, you know, an armament I'm really eager to, uh, you know, transmute is this guy over here, which has 3.3 attack, 3.1 health. I mean, if I could lock these two and actually get this middle one to roll archers, that would be amazing. Uh, or I guess this takes five transmutation stones. I only have 14 for the week. So this is something I will do, and if I were rallying or garrisoning archers anytime soon, I'd do this immediately, but I'm not. So my game plan here is to try to pick the armaments that are weakest in my roster and to power those up. So for example, for me personally, um, if I look at my in, you know, common inscriptions over here, the thing that really needs the most love for me is actually this particular armament type. Okay, Th this one, the little coin thing, let me tell you, man, I just get wrecked on this for the overwhelming majority of my armaments. So this one right over here, Deflector Enduring, 
is really interesting. Um, and it's like the best one I have for archers, which is actually like shocking that I don't have better. So this is probably where I'm going to go in and do the most work, kind of re-rolling and seeing what I get. I won't make you sit through all of my re-rolls here, even though I am tempted to sort of do all of that now. I think it's going to take a while. But one that I am going to re-roll because it's a double inscription and because everything is just trash is this Olympia's Chorus Master. So I am actually really, really kind of excited to see what happens this has guarded the wielder's troop as a 10% chance to reduce incoming skill damage by 20%. Cooldown of five seconds. That's interesting. Respite whenever the wielder's troop is attacked is a 10% chance to reduce all damage taken by 10% for two seconds. Could be cool anti-swarm, right? Well, I know I got to reroll everything that's on here. So we could do yeah, one stone just to see, right? One stone. What happens? Transmute. Yes. Boom. And that is way better two cavalry stats here and the, you know hey look the defense rolled low and the cav health ro rolled low mid but uh suddenly this thing gets a lot more interesting doesn't it so this is why the transmutation stones are actually really exciting i'm gonna hit the replace button to keep these attributes because that's actually a step in the right direction and then i kind of have to decide like am i comfortable with mid and low rolls here um, or, or how do I want to continue with this particular armament, given that this is a mid roll and a, and a low, like the literal lowest you could get? Do I want to use five stones a pop to try to get this last one? Eh, we'll see, maybe. But I'll overwrite for now because that's actually a huge upgrade. And it's easy to see now why the transmutation stones are actually like really exciting and that the possibility space for these is like really incredible. Because you can take an armament that like should have been good and should have been exciting, but isn't, and turn it into something just like really incredible and really exciting. So I'm pretty pumped to play around with that more and sort of see what sorts of things I can come up with. And I'm going to have to just be really strategic around, you know, which ones do you actually re-roll? And I will just point to things like extra all damage. I know I have one. For this particular formation, I can show it to you, um, where it's actually just a really good inscription, but the stats that I got are really bad. Cohesive, right? 2% extra damage when you have over 50% of units remaining. That's really good. There's another one that's really exceptional. Oh, here's cohesive again. Look at that. Cohesive, and it's got all this garbage. I'm going to just transmute this. You should be smarter with your transmutations, but I, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to bang a couple of these out. Okay, all of these are, are garbage. So anything focusing on one troop type will be amazing. We jam out a transmutation stone and I get total trash. Now I will replace what I had. Okay, replace, sure. Um, but I probably don't even lock these. Like maybe you lock the archer defense, even though it's a low roll and try to get more archer stuff, maybe. Um, but that's sort of my strategy for going in here. I think when you reroll... The chances are really low that you're actually going to get something exciting. Like Vitality is really good. 3.5% health. Um, siege unit attack of 1.6. March speed of archers is so irrelevant here. And damage to barbs. Like this is a cool one to, to reroll. I'm just going to do this for the sake of the video. Okay. But generally speaking, I think you want to be really, really strategic with every one of these transmutation stones. And cavalry march speed cavalry defense this is definitely an upgrade but still not quite there but suddenly this is like kind of interesting right like i have three and a half percent health 2.8 march speed 1.8 defense you definitely can do way better than that so i'll smash yes that's definitely better right these transmutation stones change everything i'm telling you man that's enough about transmutation stones let's get back to the other stuff in this patch that that is pretty hype and one thing that you'll notice is that the city theme for the upcoming Greece event is here. If I scroll all the way down, here it is, okay? And this thing gives me 5% cavalry health at the cost of 5% archer attack. I actually think that's really good. Uh, if you want to even just like rally barb forts in the off season, this is gonna be a great city theme to just live in. I use a very similar city theme on my restart account all the time. So if you don't have many great city themes or you haven't yet locked in a great cav theme, this is a really, really great cav theme i mean you think about what archers do and they often buff their own attack as well so losing the attack is something you'll barely miss and gaining the health for cavalry is something you will really really enjoy
So that's pretty hype to see. I did look to see if there's like any new avatar frames or crazy stuff, but it looks like the only cosmetic we see is just for the upcoming Greece event, and that's it. Um, so nothing too far to predict out with regard to sort of the future of uh, what events are on their way. But I will point out there is an important setting that you can change. And if you go into your general settings, you will notice that the PC controls have changed pretty significantly. But there is something, I think it's in customization, perhaps, um, that will allow you to prevent your troops from retreating. And this should be, there it is, hold position after attack, okay? So today, when you defeat an enemy march, your troops retreat back to your city. It's a little weird that this toggle is like so buried because it's like kind of hard to find. But if you go in and you toggle this, your troops will stay out after you battle other players. And where is this valuable? If you've ever had a fight right outside your city, it's basically impossible to actually do without switching targets really early. Because if you defeat a target right out your right outside your city, but you want to keep fighting, too bad. All your troops are instantly back into your city before you can do anything about it. Hold position after attack will enable you to stay outside of your city in that situation. Also, in big fights, if you don't want to be like constantly retreating when marches are getting defeated, I think this is going to be a really interesting um, play. And it is also interesting to note that this resets after 24 hours. So far, by default, your marches will make their way home. One other major change to the way the game works that is here is that if a flag is building, you can toggle your troops to stay. So for example, this fort is building um, and you see this option garrison building after it's built. You, If you click this on your way in, your troops are going to stay there after it finishes building. This is a big deal. The way that this works today, or, or actually before today, uh, was that your troops would retreat after the building finishes, which means if you're in a contentious kingdom versus kingdom battle, you know, you're like, you're building a flag right on the enemy's front line. You're getting into position to attack them. And like, you, you know, you're doing this big field battle and your garrison's in play and it's getting rallied. And then like, oh, it finishes building. Everybody leaves the flag and it automatically burns because the gar the rally was still going and everything in the garrison just left because it finished building. It made no sense. So this change is actually really awesome. It gives you control. You can either have your troops go home, which they will by default, or if you select that you want to garrison it after it's built, they will garrison it. And I like actually that this is baked into the screen where you, you know, select if you want to join the building rather than on the march or anything like that, because that means that you have a lot of control here. Um, and, you know, you can click this and then every time you go into this building with anything, I suppose, um, it's going to stay garrisoned. So for example, if I, if I run in like that, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's going to stay garrisoned, which, which is great. I, I like that that works that way. Um, from here, we can look to the patch notes, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff that has been promised, but isn't quite here yet. By the way, here is that uh, Amulet of Protection Lost Bundles that showed up for me. One thing that I like is that now they show the chances on the armament crate of, you know, getting an inscribed legendary armament and a legendary armament. That's really cool. Um, if I go in and click on an epic crate, let's look at what those probabilities are. So if I click this bad boy, oh, this is so cool. Inscribe legendary armament, 2% chance, and a legendary armament, 14.5% chance. Inscribed epic is 16.6, and an epic armament is two-thirds of the time. And then the formation choice chest, 0.48% chance of an inscribed legendary. Oh, my God. 3.366 um, for a legendary. 3.846 for an inscribed epic. So you're you're actually... Almost as likely to get an inscribed epic as you are a legendary armament. Very interesting. The epic armaments are 15.385. And then three-fourths of the time, you just get a blue. <laughs> Technically more than three-fourths of the time, which is pretty wild. I think that this edition, I've got to just say, of Transmutation Stones is very good for the game. I think the deployment to the silver currency was very critical and strategic and good. And I am actually extremely happy with its positioning there. And like, look, between you and me, I think the value of these transmutation stones is really, really high. And the reason that they, I think they're priced cor correctly-ish at around 30 is that because you need to use like 
five of them, the cost ends up being like way higher, right? To actually re-roll some of the very best armaments you'll get your hands on. If you're looking for any other information about the update, I'll definitely be covering that on my channel as soon as we see some of these things actually appear in game. There may be one or two other small things that are cool, so drop those in the comments if you've found those and they're in-game already, and join my Discord server if you haven't already. That's discord.gg slash chisschool. I will be sure to announce when I think that the new Legendary Commander is actually in your gold keys. If you want to see my review of the new uh, commanders in the Greece civilization, I'll have cards in the end screen for that in just a second.